Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's the BBC Mitravat Gertz Unigore 6E analog meter. Yeah, from about the 90s. They're they're quite old. And this one is a little bit different from the other ones. I've already shown in my video list, so if you are into analog meters and the Unicore series, yeah, I actually got quite a lot of these instruments uh, covered in my video lists. But this one is the 6E, and it is a brand new one for my collection of funky uh, analog meters. We got um, quite a wide range of current from micro amps to 3 amps and voltage all the way from 1 millivolt and 1000 volts and of course it can do resistance and capacitance and all that kind of stuff as well I think to do uh, capacitance you need an external AC source and that is uh, quite normal. And this is the current overload reset. So there's a mechanical relay and current goes through this relay and re it releases the current. This one is a little bit special. This is the on off switch for everything. Voltage, amps, resistance and capacitance. Everything goes with this on off switch, not only the dial here for main feature. This is the on off switch. And this is what is interesting about this meter. Of course, in all those ranges of both current and voltage, it is uh, using very little energy. So in, in, um, in current, the voltage drop is very, very little. So there's a sense resistor that is very low value. And then it amplifies and then displays. And it's the same in voltage, all voltage modes as well. The input resistance is very, very high and it amplifies and drives the meter using the built in batteries. So that means you can't even put it here and measure any voltage at all if you don't, don't have any batteries in it or if you didn't turn the on off switch on to uh, enable the built-in amplifier. So, so that, that is the big difference with this meter. Like all Unicore meters in this entire series, there's a full manual on the back and they um, you can buy these in all the different main languages. This one is German, but I've seen them in French and Danish and whatnot. So, so that is the, the fun thing. It could have been smart if we had different languages on different sides, but that's just not the way it is. This one in here is a little bit dirty and I don't dare to wash this because you can imagine if I try and wash this, I'm probably going to wipe away some of the text. But what we can read here is you can see the internal resistance in the voltage ranges. So that is definitely impressive for an analog meter and it's the same here in in currents oops can you see the voltage drop is very very low so you have one microamp for example and the voltage drop is only one millivolt so obviously you need an amplifier to make the meter yeah read anything right Yeah, oh, so it says something about the batteries here. Yeah, so we got four, one and a half. Oh, see the size? That's uh, C size. And since this uses amplified readings for everything, obviously you're going to use the batteries faster. So that is this is why you have four really big cells in here to contain the energy for a yeah month of usage obviously 
And the thing is, this unit is normal, normally this side down. So when you have a leaked battery, all the bad slime is going to go here on this back side. So I will see if I can clean this. And I'm super lucky we don't have any nasty slime inside the battery contacts here. So let's try and put in some... Uh, oh yeah, okay, a little bit. Yeah, we're going to try and put in some batteries and see if it works. So I was able to clean the battery slime just using cold water and dried it that, like that. So now that is nice and clean. I wanted to show you, here is the room for spare fuses. And here it says 4 amp. So that's of course a um, fuse in series with the 3 amp uh, current range, right? And yeah, this one uses sub C cells and I only got AA cells, but I got a 3D printer. So I just printed some little holders. I found this design on Thingiverse, so I didn't even spend time designing my own. And the reason for the two different colors, that's because I started two printers at the same time to, <laughs> to double the speed. <laughs> that is nice. It totally works. And of course, with uh, batteries in, that will be 30 volts range. We are here. So this should be 10. My input is 10 volts. And how about if we crank it to 10? Let's look at that. Oy, oy, oy. It is really, really nice. <laughs> I'm quite happy about that so far. So good. So let's just try the amps as well. So this is one amp. And my power supply is set for one amp. And it's of course complaining. Output is shorted. Oh, so it shows a tiny little bit too much. We can go to 3 amp range. And then it shows exactly 1 amp. So let's try some of the more interesting ranges. So this is 1 milliamp full range. And at the moment it reads a tiny little bit over 0.9. I would say 0.91 and uh, I think I got about 0.9 of a milliamp. Here we got of course a little bit more digits. And how about the microamp range? So this is one microamp range and we are also reading 0.91 and uh, I believe we are at 0.9 microamps. So how do you make all these tiny little amps, by the way? <laughs> Here's my trick. I, I fine tune the voltage. This is, of course, uh, fine tuned to the last digit here. And then I just <laughs> have one mega ohm uh, for microamps and one kilo, amp, uh, kilo ohms for milliamp. It's that easy. And then you can. Of course, pull the current through this meter and through the other meter. So that's an easy way to generate very, very uh, small and accurate currents. So I think we should open and have a look. I, of course, got a big kit of all sorts of funky tools, so I can always get into whatever it is, right? But <laughs> look at the size of these annoying nuts here. And this is my biggest. It just don't work. So that means I need to figure out another way to open it. Of course, they will never prevent me from going in here, right? By using all sorts of funky nuts. It's they're only postponing the inevitable. I will get in. So I'm now inside the unit. But before we talk about <laughs> the unit itself, I really want to show you <laughs> something absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can get some light in here. What the heck happened here? So this is the inside of the case. It's of course nicely shielded. And this is some uh, metal. It's not even a coating. This is a thin sheet of metal. 
and it's melted and burned some holes like that. It, it even made some, yeah, smelted the plastic as well. So that is uh, something. The battery compartment, see, we got those little metal sticks, or metal things, and they connect to the unit. Yeah, I kind of knew this one was a lot more modern and a lot more complex compared to the previous versions. I don't know if you can see this, but it's full of transistors and electronics. It's um, try to see how many transistors there. We got a few down here, and it's really, really, uh, yeah, complex uh, unit. And again here, more transistors, and up there as well. It's just full of transistors all over the place. And all the sense resistors we see up here, they are the special forward and back wounded uh, low inductance type of resistors. And uh, I don't actually understand why, but I think it's also because it can, of course, measure current in AC modes, not only DC current. And that is why, of course, you want the sense resistors to be low inductance. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, we've got many sections of the switch as well, voltage protection, and that one is high voltage spark gap made so it can really handle some high power it looks like less than a kilovolt and then um, the old circuit boards there are ex yeah also this one they're double sided circuit boards got some really interesting tracks going on here look at this it's around there and this one goes up here and here and so on and oh, look at that one what the funky tracks yeah. I think I can maybe demonstrate the protection system so here is it looks like a relay coil and in here we've got a very big screw and this connects the closed magnetic loop here and of course changes the magnetic amplification or sensitivity in this case so a little bit of the sense current from uh, the different ranges goes of course through this system and um, there is a little magnet down here so it's a holding or latching relay and if I try and uh, simulate that we put in magnetic or current that generates magnetic. So sometimes when the current is, is uh, weakening this holding magnet to a point where it will release, click. And then this magnet is released from this metal. And then see, this point here is disconnected. So good high voltage disconnect. And there's also up here a tiny little signal switch that also tells the system it has been disconnected somehow. So the fun thing is, can you see this spring up here? And this one is really tough. So we go just over the middle and at the very, very middle here we have zero torque. And a little bit to the right, see, right there, it can stay right there, right? So I have reset the system by pushing it back like that. And now there is a little bit of push from this spring. And this helps the magnet also hold this part. Because if I release this one from the, ah, see, this, uh, shock pulls <laughs> actually also release the magnet here and this let's try and yeah see 
we can demonstrate the magnet can just barely hold this part alone but it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to see click it's supposed to be like that so there's additional push this way so when this one comes flying real fast this way it pushes this part let's try and demonstrate that so it pushes this part and releases this mechanism and this also releases this little switch right there see click and click and we can of course now it's everything is reset and then it goes a little bit fast now punk so that is how this super cool protective system works and i am a little bit impressed about this entire place has been like one big flaming glaze. We can see some black parts here and a little bit of black crispy. They cleaned everything and replaced everything or maybe disassembled this entire. Maybe this is a new one or something like that. I can see some burn marks here and all that. Yeah, but it's repaired quite well. Impressive. Let's try the last thing, the ohm meter. So here's what I'm doing. I put this into resistance and uh, of course I put in the batteries. And here I use this potentiometer to put the needle at exactly zero. So I've got nothing connected. So if I take, yeah, I have it in, this is the multiplier. So this is how it works. So it says multiply by one kilo ohms so whatever you read here in the ohm scale you multiply by one kilo so let's try and see if we can measure one k resistor and then it goes all the way down to one so that is perfectly fine let's take another one here is a 10k resistor and then it goes to 10. And it goes to, I mean, exactly 10, right? That is a little bit amazing. So I really think these meters are just crazy fantastic. And this one was even burned and toasted and repaired and all that kind of stuff. And it is still really, really nice and fine today. See what happens when I hold it up instead of lying down. See here is that is a thing with these uh, meters. The angle of the meter is important. So sometimes if you want to to do something uh, in in your workbench, you could probably put the meter up, but then it's going to read this much wrong. So these are specially designed to be lying down like that and this is probably also why you find these rubber feet on the bottom of the back and not right here because the meter is not designed for standing up this is something you must know anyway this is all i wanted to show you in this video so thank you very much for watching bye bye